in the name of Jesus, the cause of emptiness in your life, financial emptiness in your life. I pray for you by the God of grace and God of mercy this night, by a prophetic word I declare, enjoy supplies from today. Enjoy supplies from today. Enjoy supplies from today. Enjoy financial supplies from today. May God raise strangers, men you do not know, and cause them to be interested in your rising. May God raise captains of industry and direct their interest to you and your family. In the name of Jesus, I forbid you from begging. I forbid you from begging. By the wisdom of the Spirit, I forbid you from begging. By the favor of God, I forbid you from begging. By the gift of man, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that God is able to give us treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places where the eyes of men cannot see. May God show you gold in the midst of debris. May God show you gold in the midst of chaos. You will see things others don't see. You will capitalize on opportunities for your profiting. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, whoever is looking for a man to help, may they find you. Whoever is looking for a man to lift, may they find you. In the name of Jesus, for those of you who are owing, you are owing corporate debt, personal debt, ministry debt, I decree and declare, by the gift of men, the ministry of helpers, come out of that financial calamity now. Come out of that financial calamity now. I bless the works of your hands. Go and prosper in business. Go and prosper in your career. Go and prosper in your investments. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare every careless decision depleting your finances, careless financial decisions, I decree and declare, may the wisdom of God bail you out of such kind of lifestyle. In the name of Jesus, since you believe in financial testimonies, I release it to your life. This week, I release it to your life. This week, I release it to your life. In addition to your spiritual growth, in addition to your prayer life, in addition to your word study, in addition to your loving Jesus, in addition to your serving Jesus, I declare go and prosper. Go and prosper with dignity and with honor in the name of Jesus. For some of you, you have been helped by God, but the dimension you will experience this week, let it be such that you have never seen before. Let it be such that you have never seen before. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare, let something rest on your head from tonight. Hear me? Hear me? Favor is likened to light that shines upon the face of a man. A glow that attracts help. I'm praying for you. Whatever has covered you, so that those who help you cannot identify that you are the one they were sent to. I declare that veil is torn from off your face. That veil is torn from off your destiny, torn from off your face. In the name of Jesus. Finally, I pray for you in the name that is above all names. Hear me. Every assignment you have now before you that depends on finances, wherever God has ordained for that money to come from, I don't care if it's in millions or billions, provided it is for your destiny and will ultimately lead to the glorification of the Christ. I stand by prophecy. I gravitate those resources to your life. I gravitate those resources to your life. I hope you believe it. I gravitate those resources to your life. For some of you, while you are here in Nigeria, foreigners, God will connect you to men across the nations they will desire to help you of their own accord. They will hold your hands and see to it that you are empowered also. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me pray for you. The distraction that comes with prosperity, I decree and declare it is exempted from your life. The spiritual lukewarmness that befalls men in the presence of plenty, may it be far from your life. You will prosper still having your zeal for Jesus. You will prosper still having your passion for Jesus. You will prosper still prioritizing the kingdom. You will prosper and your resources will be beneficial for the kingdom. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Now, I call your November a blessed month. I call it a month of favor. I call it a month of testimonies. I call it a month of breakthrough. I call it a month of lifting. You will see the hand of God strong upon your life. You will make constructive destiny along the path of, I mean, a, a constructive progress along the path of destiny in Jesus' name. I bless you with honor. I bless you with favor. Goodness and mercies follow you. In the name of Jesus Christ, fresh fire upon your prayer life, fresh fire upon your word study life. You are separated from evil. Naysayers are far from your life. Evil doers are far from your life. All who will make for your favor, may they appear this week. All who will make for your spiritual efficiency, may they appear this week. Wisdom is yours this week. You will make quality decisions that enhance your destiny. In the name of Jesus. We together. You can only give what you have. Oh. If you don't have it, you cannot give it. By the grace of God, God has shown us mercy even in the area of finances. This is why the temptation to manipulate is a temptation that dies on arrival. It is unnecessary and it is foolish. Do you know why? Because when God helps you and gives you capacity in an area, he has also empowered you to resist the tendency for temptation in that area. When someone is eating and is full, you can't tempt the person with food. It won't work. There are many, many believers who love Jesus. Some of you right now, you are neck deep into all kinds of debt. Personal debt, corporate debt. There are churches, men and women of God who love the Lord. And their churches are about to close because they are not able to pay the bills. I know a God who is merciful and kind, faithful and gracious. I'm the apple of his eyes, the thought that fills his heart every morning and night. Hold on. Praise the name of the Lord. Hold on. The Lord is showing me something that I saw many years ago and I'm seeing it again. He's reminding me of a vision that he showed me where I was holding bread and the bread had honey. As I just raised this song, this is what I saw. You see, I, I've shared that vision here and people were not seeing the machine. There was a machine that I was the only one who was seeing it and it was producing bread and in case of butter, it was putting honey in the middle. You could press it and honey was coming out and there were multitudes joining the queue and all I was doing was to serve the bread and honey and then people would take it and call their neighbors and friends they would join the queue again and the shocking thing in that vision was that it never got exhausted it didn't matter how many times they were joining the queue you see there is a dimension of our call and assignment that attends to the welfare of God's people it's a grace, it's not a desire, it's a grace. It's a grace. I will worship him forever, love him forever, because this God is too good. I will worship him forever, love him forever. Hallelujah. I want to pray for the sick right now. I will pray for the sick and we'll come back to this finance thing. Please open up your heart to receive something on your head this night for your finances. If you don't believe it, no problem. You can do whatever you know to do. But allow those who believe it to receive. 
Are we together now? Don't interrupt another person's believing. We believe all kinds of things about finances and everyone. We live in a world where God gives you the liberty to believe what you want to believe and receive of the fruit of your understanding. Hallelujah. Lay your hands where you are trusting God for a miracle. Now please, this is the prophetic instruction. I want you to listen carefully. I'm going to rebuke sickness now. Please, if you came sick, this is your moment. Remember, you prayed for an opportunity to discern. I'm going to minister to you by the spirit of grace. And the moment I minister to you, I want you to check yourself. If you need to use the medical stand, I want you to run there and confirm it. For instance, if it's high blood pressure, you can go to the medical stand and confirm. Or you can go to the convenience and confirm depending on what your situation is. But I'm going to pray quickly. And then I notice for a month or two, we've not had the time to take testimonies. We'll take a few testimonies right now. It's important that we give an opportunity for people to testify. And uh, we'll work with the time we have. We have to take testimony. So please listen. As the power of God touches you, some of you, as you came under the anointing, upon returning back to your seat, you found out that the pain, the discomfort, everything is gone. The moment I pray for you and I ask you to come, if you are in the overflow outside, make your way very quickly. Just tell the ushers and the protocol that I am coming to testify. They will test you and allow you to come and um, you'll be allowed to stay at my left or my right and there'll be a few people who will just confirm you and will take a few testimonies for those who are following online i'm going to pray and release miracles right now particularly healing miracles the moment that happens we have our helplines the pr lines i want you to send in your testimony we'll take one or two to celebrate the good hand of god now if you came here listen carefully if you came here with a walking aid a crutch perhaps a wheelchair, some kind of aid, and you know that you have a bone condition, I'm going to start with you. Whether you are outside any of the overflows, when I pray for you, I'd like you to believe that you receive strength and I want you to do what you could not do before. And once we have a miracle confirmed for you and for any other person, there are others who were brought maybe on stretchers, others could not work, others you are not able to see, others you are not able to hear, others you are having blood conditions, palpitations you know all kinds of things release your faith now to receive place your hand where you are trusting God for a miracle and speak to the Lord in one minute and I release that grace upon you you can stand in for your loved one they may not be here physically but I like you to believe for a miracle for them and as we always do there are hospitals there are clinics there are medical places that are people now are right now following uh, life and they're about to receive miracles for their loved ones. I want you to encourage your loved ones to release their faith. And the moment we pray, we'll be glad to hear your testimonies. I see people laying hands on photos. Believe God for a miracle. The Bible says, he that cometh to God must come believing that he exists. I am a living testament of the healing power of Jesus. I know he heals. I know he heals. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Place your hand, I want to pray for you now. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessed be the Lord God Almighty, who reigns for In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, I take authority over every spirit of infirmity. Every spirit of infirmity. Every spirit of infirmity. Blood conditions, spirits responsible for palpitations, bone conditions, deteriorations of organs, I take authority over you by the blood of the eternal covenant and I decree and declare that you leave God's people now. I declare that you leave God's people now. By the power of the Holy Ghost, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit surge through your being right now, surge through your body right now, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I declare over everyone here sick in body be healed now. 
Shout a believing amen. Be healed now. Lumps and all kinds of satanic growths in your body, I command it to dissolve and to disappear now. Mobility problems. You are not able to walk. You are not able to stand. You are having bone problems, neck problems. In the name of Jesus, be healed now. You have any kind of eye condition you are not able to see or see clearly. I declare over your eyes, let the power of God touch your eyes now. I speak to anyone who is here deaf, be healed in the name of Jesus. Let the deafness be unstopped right now in Jesus' name. Anyone who is suffering from any blood condition, blood condition, the issue of blood, or any kind of blood condition be healed in the name of Jesus. I was so touched by the testimony that was shared here. I think it was, um, was it online or on site? The person who had, you know, vom would throw up anything that they, they ate and drank. I decree and declare any digestive problem that you have, you're suffering from, be healed right now in Jesus' name. There's someone you have a circulation problem. It's like something that has to do with excess fat in your body. Blood is not able to flow and circulate well. The Lord is healing you right now in Jesus' name. You have a neck problem. I don't know if you came with a bracelet or whatever aid, but I decree and declare that neck is healed right now. Shoulder pain be healed right now. Knee pain be healed right now. In the name of Jesus kidney problems you have any kidney problem i declare that that kidney stone or whatever it is it is flushed out of your body now flushed out of your body now you have a respiratory problem there's someone you have a serious respiratory problem it makes you to snore you snore very seriously in the name of jesus be healed right now be healed right now be healed right now there is a woman I'm saying that you have something like a growth and that growth is stopping you from taking in this is what I'm seeing you have a growth and the growth is stopping you from taking in I don't know who that person is but in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that that growth shrinks and leaves your body and you will feel it within your body that a miracle has happened in the name of Jesus there's someone you've been having a very severe I don't know what your problem you're having with your tongue your tongue very severe is it pain is it irritation or discomfort very severe irritation I declare to you be healed right now in Jesus name be healed right now in Jesus name be healed right now in Jesus name cancers of any and all sorts whatever stage it is be healed in the name of Jesus be healed in the name of Jesus anyone having a speech problem for you or your child be healed now in the name of Jesus anyone believing God for an autistic child we release the power of God and we declare healing right now in Jesus name every mental health challenge anyone who was brought here mad or brought here with any kind of psychosomatic condition I decree and declare be healed right now in the name of Jesus now whether I mention your case or not I want you to be healed receive your miracle in the name of Jesus I want to lay hands on one person I'm going to ask you to check yourself but the Lord is mentioning someone's case for me and I am the Lord is asking me to minister to you this started from a dream listen carefully please don't be careless to come out just because I said I would lay hands it started from a dream it's like you were fed with something in a dream and from that time you woke up you don't know the name of what is wrong with you but you are losing weight you are losing weight it's like a demonic thing I want to pray for that person very quickly you woke up from a dream 
and from the time you woke up from that dream you've not been able to diagnose exactly what is wrong with you but you are emaciating you are losing weight I want to know that person I want to pray for you it's a demonic thing hallelujah we're still praying for the sick are we receiving in the name of Jesus I'm seeing someone it's not I don't know it's your chest I, I'm not sure it's directly your breast but around your chest area there's been something a very a, like a mast something not directly on your breast but are, are maybe the upper part of your chest like a mast forming in the name of Jesus I want to pray for you that demonic satanic thing gives way right now shout a believing amen it gives way right now it gives way right now it gives way right now what's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to I bet it's fear fear that whispers you're not enough you can't do it you'll fail but what if I told you God never intended for you to live in fear in fact he has given you everything you need to overcome it Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. 
You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.